Hi guys, today we're going to be going over the embryology of the heart again. Now in this video, we're going to be going over the valve and septa formation and we're going to break it down as simply as possible so that everyone watching will be able to understand it, even if you're new to the concept. Now I'd recommend that you watch my previous video on the embryology of the heart. That'll give you the best foundation possible to continue watching with this video. And if you're completely new to embryology, I'd recommend that you watch my introduction to embryology video, which will give you the basic foundation for everything that you need to know for a basic foundation of knowledge in embryology. Uh, you can easily get 30 PhDs and spend your whole life in the most simplest part of any part of what I'm about to say but for purposes of this video and all of my videos I'm going to break it down simply so that all beginners should should understand embryology okay with that being said let's get straight into it and as usual let's begin at the beginning at the blastula the blastula will become you and that's why it's important to know what it is so the blastula will undergo a process called gastrulation to form the three germ layers. Now, this is a simplified version of this. We have ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. And eventually these fold in a way so that you are surrounded by ectoderm, which is mostly skin, and that your endoderm will become your uh, gastrointestinal tract, just to keep it very simple. Okay, so if we focus our attention now down to this one, we'll have the ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm, and the mesoderm is broken up into three parts. We have the paraxial mesoderm, which becomes somite, muscles, intermediate mesoderm, which becomes gonads and kidneys, and then the lateral plates, which is for, further broken down into two parts, the somatic and splanchnic plates. So the first high yield point is where does the heart come from? Where does the heart develop from? It develops from splanchnic mesoderm. But more precisely what happens is that cells migrate down and reside and proliferate at the splanchnic mesoderm forming the pri primary heart field and we went through all of that in the previous video this is just a very quick recap because now we're going to fast forward to the newborn heart so this is what it looks like at a, at a longi longi longitudinal section of the newborn heart we have the left ventricle right ventricle the septa right atrium left atrium and in this section right here the development of this septum I go through in the previous video so we have the foramen ovale here and the valve and at birth there is a pressure change between the chambers of the left atria and the right atria whereas before birth the right atria had a higher pressure than the left atria but after birth it swaps and so what happens is that this valve fuses because of the pressure change. So I go through all of that in that previous video. For this video, we're going to be going over the development of this, this, and also the semilunar valves. All right, so uh, let's have a look at the atrioventricular canal. And again, don't let it scare you. Just think about it as step one, two, three, Four, from day 23 to day 35. So in the period of this time, you will have one canal going to two canals. And the high yield points on how it does that is that it's a proliferation of both an anterior and posterior endocardial cushion from about roughly... this level here. but we'll go through that. And the proliferation of the anterior and posterior eventually fuse, they come together and fuse, forming two canals, the right atrioventricular canal and the left atrioventricular canal. And there's also a lateral endocardial cushion. So after the atrioventricular endocardial cushions fuse, there's a local proliferation of mesenchymal tissue at the orifice. And that's represented here in black and that will become the valves it'll become either one of these are either part of the bicuspid or tricuspid valves and then this is a generic left or right ventricle and the valves in either side are made in this similar way 
So what happens is that blood flow hollows out some of the ventricle and it leaves behind the chordae tendinae and the papillary muscles. Now, before the chordae tendinae become the chordae tendinae, they are surrounded by muscle that are degenerated by the blood flow. So essentially, all it takes is blood flow just to form the papillary muscle and the chordae tendinae. The valve, the mesenchymal tissue, remains attached to the ventricular wall through this system of papillary muscle and chordae tendinae. Now, there's also some molecular guidance to how this happens, but that's above the scope of this video. If you'd like to know more information about that, contact me on Facebook, I'll be glad to send you some info. Okay, so again, to summarize, we have a local proliferation of mesenchyme, as well as a hollowing out of the ventricle from blood flow, forming the papillary muscle and the chordae tendinae, which are attached to the valve. And this is a generic framework for what happens in both the bicuspid and tricuspid development. Okay, now paying attention to these three diagrams here, again, this is in week five, week six, week seven, and this is at the level of the semilunar valves. Now, we have the, this single lumen becoming both the aorta and the pulmonary artery, and at this level it's called the truncus arteriosus. So we have a cross-sectional view of the truncus arteriosus, and again we have the left inferior truncus swelling and the right truncus swelling joining, fusing, and then turning, separating the aorta and pulmonary artery. And now this here is tissue of the valve. If we have a look at it longitudinally, this is what we'll see. So with, with, form, with time, by week nine, you'll have a more cupping of the valves so that they have that characteristic semilunar look. So this arrow, these arrows are depicting the direction of which the valves are cupping and forming. So the blood flow is coming up this way. And when the heart is developed, you, you might, for the aorta, have a coronary artery behind, the, behind these um, valves. Of course, there'd be another, another valve. And when the blood flows up during systole, it closes the valves. And during a diastole, blood flows back, filling the cups, and then the coronary arteries will receive blood so that they can send uh, blood to the rest of the heart. Okay, moving on. Now this is the most difficult part of the video, the difficult part to understand, but let's break it down. Only focus attention here. Now, this is an, a cut section of this heart here. This is the developing heart. So we're cutting it here and we are seeing the two valves. Now, these two valves will be separated, one, and with that separation, you will have the formation of this aortico-pulmonary septum. Now, what we saw over here is what happens to separate these two lumens. So, if you only look, forget about all those colours for now, if we only look at this blue, which is the proliferation of the anterior atrioventricular cushion, here, as it proliferates, it completely occludes with the help of these two um, re uh, regions, which we'll go through. It completely occludes the left side of the heart from, receive, from mixing its blood from the other side. So we have this proliferation slowly closing off the left and the right side, the left and the right uh, ventricles. So we have 
the venous flow coming in from this side and the aortic flow will come from behind it from the left side so to go over that again initially it's all it's a free-for-all we have arterial blood and venous blood being mixed and sent through in the heart at week six by the end of week seven we'll have an occlusion between the left and the right uh, canals and therefore this red arrow is now behind these walls that are created and it's separate from the venous blood okay in a similar manner over here if we look at the valve formation we notice how it twists a little bit just think about this as a twist so again proliferation of the anterior endocardial cushion in blue as well as the right conotruncal region and the left conotruncal region will close off this interventricular foramen and now we have separate aortic I mean sorry arterial and separate venous blood flow so if we only look at this purple this is the left conotruncal region I mean ridge, left conotruncal ridge, and that proliferates. So you notice that there's a bit of a twist here. Imagine this if it was flat, looks like this. But because of a twist, so we're twisting just the top, let's say, it looks like this. So that's why it looks twisted like that. Just imagine you're twisting a flat bit of paper around like this and it's becoming like that in that similar manner it grows and separates the pulmonary trunk from the aorta so again the right coronary uh, sorry the right conotruncal ridge proliferates and twists in a similar manner and the combination of the anterior endocardial cushion the right and left co conotruncal ridge that closes the interventricular foramen and also separates the blood flow from the aorta from the pulmonary trunk and I think that that's all I have to talk about with regarding the development of the heart if you have any questions or comments please leave one below uh, I'll be glad to get back to you. I look at all the comments and of course I answer all messages on Facebook as well. So thank you very much for watching.